Hello everyone, my name is Pierre. I'm a founding engineer at Lama Index, uh, which is a startup uh, trying to, to build rags, basically trying to bring data uh, to large language model. Just a quick show of hand, who here has already used uh, one of our products or framework? Okay. Um, yep, so Lama Index, basically, um, our vision is to try to build things that allow context augmentation uh, for AI, Gen AI, or large language model uh, application. So um, we are quite popular. Uh, we are already used today uh, by quite a few companies in production, and the number is growing every week. Uh, and we build quite a few products. Uh, the most popular and the one we are well known for uh, is the Lama Index Python framework uh, that is open source under MIT license and that is still under very active development. Uh, we try to release uh, every new techniques or every new things around RAG uh, inside the frameworks. Uh, and it, you can see it basically as a toolbox or as a super glue uh, that allow to connect your app to 80 plus uh, vector store database, uh, 100 or so uh, model providers and that implement uh, most of the modern or up-to-date technique uh, that you need to use to do a nice RAG pipeline, RAG pipeline, sorry. Um, uh, just as an example, in the last uh, 10 days, uh, here is a few things we have released. Uh, we just released composa Composable Memory for Agent, uh, which is super cool if you are building Agent. Uh, spoiler alert, uh, next week we are landing a, a very a big new multi-agent framework inside Lama Index uh, with a lot of functionality that allow you to do uh, state-of-the-art agents. Uh, we just also learned uh, last week uh, knowledge graph retrieval uh, generation capability uh, with Neo4j. Um, we will extend it to other uh, graph database providers. Um, but the contri original contribution was uh, from the Neo4j team. Uh, and uh, yesterday, or before yesterday, I forget, uh, we just learned uh, a mixture of agent uh, inside the framework. Uh, mixture of agent is like super cool. Uh, it allows you to interrogate uh, multiple LLM and to get like way better uh, answer. And uh, once again, uh, if you use the index, it's most of the time these are modules. Uh, they are very easy to use. Uh, it's just a few lines of code to use them. Uh, we also have a TypeScript framework. Uh, we are trying to bring everything that is inside the Python framework inside the TypeScript framework, uh, but it's lagging behind by a few months, uh, but we are catching up. Uh, Long-term vision uh, is that we have ISO functionality between the two frameworks, and uh, hopefully we will be able to ser ser serialize a query pipeline that is described in, Pyth in Python and deploy it uh, inside uh, a TypeScript app using the TypeScript framework. Uh, we have Lama Hub uh, because we develop so many modules, so many tools. Uh, we build a website that reference them all. Uh, we have a few uh, hundreds, maybe thousands uh, modules on Lama Hub. Uh, everything from tool for agents like ePub Reader uh, to a complex retrieval uh, strategy. Um, we have Create Lama, um, NPX Create Lama basically. Uh, which is like kind of a oh man or uh, React, React if you if you have done web development, so you just type create llama, uh, and it automatically um, asks you which backend you want, which frontend you want, which vector database you want, which template you want to use. Uh, like I want a chat template, and it creates an app for you that is easy to configure with documentation, uh, so that you can prototype uh, very quickly uh, new applications. Uh, we have set inside.ai, which is our advanced uh, RAG demo, also open source. Uh, and uh, we have a commercial offering. Uh, we have Lama Cloud, which is a managed RAG SaaS. Uh, it's in private, private preview uh, right now. And we have Lama Parse, uh, which is a document parser. So yeah, basically, this is Lama Index. Uh, we are trying to do everything uh, to try to bring the right context uh, in front of your LLM apps. Uh, when your apps needed. So, yeah, what is RAG or RAG? Uh, so it stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. Um, 
basically, uh, it's the idea that you take some data, you parse it, uh, chunk it, you store it into an index, and once you have a user question, uh, you try to retrieve uh, part of this data that is relevant to the user question and to add it to your prompt to the large language model. So that the large language model will answer the question not based on his prior knowledge on training, but based on the actual content or context that you have provided. Um, and yeah, uh, you can build very easily a naive RAG pipeline. Uh, you can use PyPDF to parse PDF. Uh, you can do some, something called sentence splitting. So you cut your document into sentences. Uh, you put them in a vector database. Uh, you do cosine similarity or similar similarity search uh, compared to the query of the user um, to do your retrieval. You find like the five sentences in your document that are the most semantically uh, near the query of your user or the things you try to, to answer. Uh, you put all together in a big prompt uh, and you let the LLM uh, generate the answer. This is super easy to do uh, in Lama Index. Uh, you can do it basically in five lines of code. Um, and it works uh, most of the time. Uh, but, yeah, it works most of the time, but it works mostly if you have simple question and if you are in a simple data set, like a single document or a data set that is not too big. Uh, so if you want to answer uh, a question on top of a 10K, which is kind of a financial feeling you have to do in the US, it will work quite well because you have a sing single document. If you want to answer a simple question on top of a single uh, document, it works. But as soon as you move to more complex use cases, uh, things start to fall apart. Uh, and is where you need to actually start to implement advanced uh, RAG technique to have good accuracy on your data set. Um, and you have multiple failure mode uh, for this naive RAG. Um, as I was saying, like, if you have a complex data or complex question, basically, um, it doesn't work that well anymore. Um, that being said, opti optimizing your RAG pipeline is not easy. Uh, when you are doing traditional software, uh, let's say I'm doing something that calculates uh, how much I should pay my employee every month, it's very easy to test. However, um, when you do RAG, uh, you have in your uh, process, you add a black box, which is LLM, and it's true for every uh, large language model apps. Um, and as soon as you have a black box in your pipeline, your whole, back, your whole uh, pipeline become a black box. Everything you will change uh, in every step before the black box or after will have an, an influence on the result of the black box. So it becomes very hard to to uh, correctly uh, assess uh, the effect of what you are doing. Um, and one of the main issues is um, you have too many parameters. So if you do a retrieval augmented generation, you can uh, impact the pipeline at every step of the web, like what parser do you use to parse your document? Uh, what uh, indexing strategy do you use for retrieval? Which kind of retrieval are you doing? Uh, how do you do your query routing or segmenting? And uh, which large language model should I use? Like, will it work with uh, GPT-4 or GPT-5 uh, in the future? Or can I use like uh, Lama 3, 7B that can run uh, locally on my user device? And all these things uh, will impact uh, the quality of your RAG uh, in the end. So basically, when you, you are trying to approach the problem, you, you, you have more or less two big areas uh, where you can improve quality. Uh, first, you can improve your data quality, uh, meaning everything before uh, the indexing or before the retrieval. Uh, and the other things you can do uh, is you can improve uh, your query complexity, so all your retrieval strategy and how you work uh, with the query of the user. And this will be the object uh, of this talk. I don't have a lot of time, so I will I have pick and choose some techniques uh, on some part of the pipeline. Uh, but yeah, there is way more to it. Uh, and if we zoom out, uh, an actual um, production REG pipeline uh, will not look like 
like six next bucks will more look like that. Um, generally, what you do, you, you have an indexing process where you have documents that you parse, that you transform in text or image or whatever, uh, that you chunk, meaning that you cut in subparts. Uh, then you index your chunk. And then you have a query process where you will first uh, generally rewrite the user query because your user, uh, if you are doing a chat apps, uh, are very good at not being clear in their question. Um, then uh, you will do your retrieval with multiple strategy uh, that will allow you to get some chunk from, sorry, from the database. Uh, then you will certainly do something called re-ranking. Uh, because vector search is very efficient. You can search millions or tens of millions of chunks in milliseconds, but the quality is not that good. So you will use a re-ranker. Um, so you will maybe retrieve the top 100 or 1,000 chunks, and then you will use a slower model, a re-ranker, to process this just 1,000 chunks and select the top 5 or top 10 uh, that you want to send to, to the LLM. Uh, then you will... Um, Synthetize, synthetize them together uh, and consolidate the chunk and reorder them or whatever. Uh, and then you will present them to an LLM to generate uh, an answer. So um, how to improve data quality? Um, let's speak about parser. Um, we often said um, shit in, shit out in computer science. Um, if your data at the beginning of your process are not good, like if uh, you don't have the data, or if your data are very messy, it will really, really, really uh, impact negatively uh, the quality of your uh, RAG. Um, and basically, when you do your data processing, uh, you have a couple of things uh, you can work on. You can work on your parsing, on your chunking, and on your indexing uh, strategy. Uh, for your parsing, uh, it's one of the reasons why we build uh, Lama Parse. Uh, you can try it here. Uh, basically, extracting clean text or clean structured text out of your document uh, is very important, uh, as it is the first step to your RAG system. So if you are trying to do RAG on top of a website, the first thing you want to do maybe is to download all the HTML and to remove all the the things that are not important for the user. Maybe you just want to keep uh, the inner text, so everything that is inside the body, and uh, the actual text. Maybe you don't care about the presentation layer, the CSS, and all the JavaScript logic. Uh, and removing it will give you cleaner data that will really improve the uh, quality of your RAG. Um, so for that, uh, yeah, as well, I think we have built uh, Lama Parse. Uh, the nice things about Lama Parse is you upload a document uh, of 80 or so uh, document type or file format. The slide is not up to date. Uh, and we give you very clean text. And this allows you um, to get very good uh, answer, uh, especially when you have table or structured data out of your document. Um, yeah, and it's the same over PowerPoint. Uh, it's the same over uh, Excel spreadsheet and uh, multiple file formats. And to, yeah, to insist again, uh, parsing itself, so just having a better quality of data, like uh, really uh, improve uh, your retrieval uh, accuracy. Uh, and, and last things for um, parsing, um, you want to parse your document toward a structured format. Uh, this will also uh, greatly improve uh, your accuracy if you are extracting text out of documents, especially if you have like scientific paper with table or thing like that. Uh, your retrieval accuracy will be very low. If you want good accuracy, you need to extract HTML or Markdown um, because the structure of the document really helps. Uh, in all ablation tests we have done with almost all um, large language models, really helps the uh, large language model to understand the quality uh, of your document. Um, once you have somehow uh, solved the parsing things uh, and you have clean text, uh, then you need to think uh, about how do you index things. Uh, here I could speak about a lot of things like big to small or 
other techniques. Uh, I will instead speak about uh, hierarchical retrieval. So the idea of hierarchical uh, retrieval is that if you have structured content and structured text, you will prepare different nodes uh, for different purposes. Let's say you have a paragraph on a table. Uh, you will first chunk uh, different uh, structural elements into different chunks, and you will treat them differently. For the table, you will most likely uh, create a new, um, you will take your table, you will, um, you will summarize it, and you will try to add metadata to it, and what you will index into your vector database will not be the actual table itself, because semantic search doesn't work well on array of numbers, because all numbers are semantically very similar, uh, surprisingly. Uh, what you will index in your vector database is more like a summarization that maybe you have generated with the LLM or with human annotation of your table. And once you retrieve this chunk, like this summarization at uh, query time, what you will present for the LLM is either the actual table, so you will switch uh, your chunk, or a, a set of tools uh, to do, for example, uh, if you put uh, your table into a panda uh, data frame. Uh, maybe you will tell the LLM, the table is in a panda data frame, here are the colon on the line, uh, generate the Python script to go search uh, the good value in the table. Um, and the idea uh, behind hierarchical uh, indexing and retrieval is that you will uh, not index the same uh, chunk that the chunk you present uh, to the LLM. So you will have chunks that you uh, prepare for indexation and chunks that you prepare for presentation and synthesis. Um, a new thing now is multimodal uh, RAG uh, for indexing. Um, what um, you can do, uh, you can use, you have GPT-40 since a month or two. Uh, and basically, you cannot do a semantic retrieval on top of image today. Like image embeddings, especially, uh, will allow you to know if there is a dog or a cat uh, in the picture. Uh, but uh, if it's a, a screenshot or a scan document, uh, it will not allow you the image embedding to retrieve the actual content of the document. Uh, so what you do, you extract the text uh, of your document and you index that inside your vector database, but at synthesis uh, time, what works very well is that you don't send to GPT-40 uh, your text that you have extracted from the document, but you actually send uh, the original image and ask GPT-40 to answer based on the original image. Um, and I have a slide for that. Um, so basically, you store a screenshot of your documents or image of your documents and uh, you send them at synthesis uh, to the LLM, and this uh, greatly increases accuracy, especially on everything with charts or graphs. Yeah. Um, a few things about uh, good query routing and planning methods. Um, the idea of query routing is not all query can be answered well uh, with a semantic search. Uh, if I ask you, um, uh, can you give me, um, like I have a document with all the list of attendees to this event, and I ask him, uh, can you list me the 10 most big company from attendees in this event, or this kind of task? Uh, it's more like a summarization uh, task, or is a task where you need to take into account the whole corpus of document. And if I do rag on top of it, I will just extract uh, the biography of 10 attendees or 15 attendees, and I will not have a complete view. So for that, you use, um, when you have a user query uh, going on, you use a query router uh, to select different retrieval strategy, uh, either vector search or summarization, generally. Uh, and this allows you um, to increase your accuracy, uh, because then you have a system that can handle query about specific facts and query uh, that are more like reasoning or summarization on top uh, of a large of your corpus uh, of documents. Uh, and 
Yep. If you are serious about Swag, I, I will encourage you to look at query routing. Uh, we have a nice user guide here uh, that explains you all the strategy. Uh, but basically, yeah, the basic idea is you select different uh, retrieval pipeline based on the user question. Another thing you can do uh, with user query uh, is uh, query planning. So some question, uh, if I ask, uh, yeah, compare revenue growth of Uber and Lyft in 2021. Uh, basically, uh, are actually two sub questions or multiple sub questions. So you decompose your query into multiple sub questions that try to target only one document. So then RAC work very well. And then um, you recompose or resynthesize your answer uh, based on the result of all your sub query pipeline. Uh, and it's the same here. If you want to go this way, we have a nice guide on it uh, and a nice implementation of multiple query planning uh, strategies on Lam in Lama Index. Um, and beyond query planning and routing, uh, we are more and more moving towards something we call agentic RAG, RAG, sorry. The first thing you can do, um, so when I speak about agent, uh, I'm not speaking about uh, persona. Uh, we are speaking about LLM, uh, giving the ability to LLM to use tool uh, to do the job. And the tool uh, is basically um, a function uh, that we give access to to the LLM, so the LLM can decide to do a query in a SQL database or uh, to call an API. Uh, normally in RAG, you just like pass through uh, the query, uh, but in more and more use cases, and when you go in production, to answer the question, maybe you are in insurance and the people are calling and asking, uh, where is my car? Uh, it's in the garage, like when can I get my car back? Uh, you will not have documents uh, on this question. You will not be able to use a vector database. What you will need to do is to use a tool or an API that allow you to go in the backend system of the insurance and uh, to get the answer back. Um, and how do you uh, make this kind of tool connect uh, inside the right pipeline? The first thing you need to do, uh, you need to do an agent uh, reasoning loop. Uh, a very popular one is uh, React. Uh, we have an implementation uh, of React, of course. Uh, another one, uh, if you are using OpenAI, OpenAI has their own implementation of React inside OpenAI agents that is a little different. And then um, you connect this agent, so this reasoning loop, basically it's a loop, like I have finished my job, what, sh what should I do next? And uh, which tool should I use? And you connect it uh, to different tools. Um, this is React, but we don't have time. Um, and once you have your agent and you have React, how can you make it uh, better? A new approach uh, is something called uh, LLM compiler. Uh, where given a user um, given a user input, uh, we do some query planning. Uh, we do some um, rags, so we do our fetch. And then uh, we launch an executor. And basically, uh, what the LLM compiler framework do, it generates for you uh, all the query planning and reorganize it and recompile it uh, into something more efficient. Uh, and of course, we have a guide and uh, an implementation of that. Another thing you can do, uh, and more and more people are doing in the agentic RAG, uh, is we use three based planning instead of DAG or uh, linear planning. Um, the idea is you try to hypothesize uh, what if I get this information, uh, what will be uh, my next step? Uh, and you let the LLM dream a little uh, about the future. And then you use like this kind of tree of plans that you could have to select the good path you think uh, will bring you to your answer. Um, yeah. Other things you need, and I will share the slide later uh, online or somewhere, so you can click the link. Um, when you put advanced swag in production, you need good observability. Um, today, you have good tool like Arise or uh, WAND DB, 
uh, that allow you to have very good observability uh, on your pipeline. Um, you need some time to be able to control your agents uh, step by step uh, at a more low level. Uh, and you need to be able to easily build a tool to access your system. Uh, on LAMAB, we have hundreds of tools, uh, like we have a tool to connect to SharePoint, we have a tool to connect to Gmail or to popular system. Uh, but most likely, we don't have a tool to connect to your intranet or whatever internal system uh, you have built. Um, and finally, um, yeah, we have something called, uh, we have query, so one of the fundamentals of uh, Lama Index are query pipeline, where you can define uh, the pipeline I've shown before on the different components and how they connect to each other. Uh, and now we have a new kind of uh, query pipeline. So we have query pipeline agent worker. Uh, that is a query pipeline uh, where uh, you can configure uh, all the steps on all the tools of your agent. And yeah, you can look at it, it's cool. Uh, we have a refactor of it uh, coming out next week, so this slide will not be uh, up to date anymore. Uh, I've been very quickly through a lot of things. Um, my key message is there is no God rag today, um, meaning there is not one solution that fits all. You will have to custom made uh, a solution to your data every time. Uh, we have a good doc. Uh, that explain most of these steps. Uh, and if you are serious about why you want to know about uh, re-ranking, metadata extraction, uh, different chunking strategy, maybe semantic chunking, uh, different retrieval strategy I haven't speak about today, like small to big auto-merging, auto-retrieval assembling, and uh, yeah, embedding fine-tuning and context reordering. And you want to have a look at all these techniques, and you have to pick and choose the one uh, that work well for your use case. And what it means, it's a lot of trial of error today. Uh, over time, you develop some kind of instinct of what will work on your data. Uh, but you have to do the hard work. Uh, you cannot expect uh, a five-line RAG, RAG uh, script to work every time. Yeah, uh, so yeah, that was more or less, um, yeah, it's not a good uh, title, sorry. Uh, it was more or less what I want to, to say. Uh, if you want to, if you are building a large language model application uh, in, in an enterprise settings, we'd love to chat. Uh, you can contact us. And maybe I have time to take one question. Okay, first one. Oh, yes, uh, so we have RAGAS and we have um, 20 or so uh, eval uh, module. Um, I don't have slide on that, so I'm going on the doc. Um, but basically, we are implementing every eval package, uh, every time a new uh, eval strategy. Um, sorry, I will look for evals, it will be faster. Um, Um, evaluations, yeah. So basically, we have a few uh, 20 or so eval strategies that are implemented. Uh, and if you want to do a faithfulness evaluator, generally we have a notebook, a link to the paper that we implement, uh, and you can generally use it uh, in a few lines of codes. Uh, and we are quite serious about eval. We, I would say we implement a new eval strategy every two weeks uh, as they come out. Uh, so. So yeah, you can go to example evolves, or uh, if you go here, I think uh, in use case evolves also, we have a section somewhere, but I don't know where. Sorry, I use the search generally. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, we, that we have thought is not new. Um, so we have them uh, already as modules, uh, so you can use them if you want. Uh, what we see more and more uh, in agentic is more like a tree of plannings. 
So these are the current approach. Uh, and of course, we have them. And uh, you can customize like your uh, ranking function or whatever. Um, yeah, what I want to say on that and what is coming soon, uh, we see more and more people trying to do this kind of thing, but also on user input. So if you have a, imagine like you have ChatGPT and you are chatting with ChatGPT, um, what we start to see is people trying to predict what will be the answer of the user instead of the answer of the system and trying to do based on that. Um, I want the user to answer with a positive sentiment to my answer, uh, trying to simulate uh, different users. So it goes beyond tree of thought for planning. Uh, you have the same methods that try to be also for predicting what will be the human behaviors and trying to influence human. And you see, you see it a lot of ad tech trying to do this kind of things. Uh, and we do have something in the work for that also coming soon. Yes. So for chunking, my answer today, in most cases, if you have documents and not web pages that are paginated, the best chunking is chunking by page most of the time. It was not the case six months ago, but know that you have Gemini, whatever, GPT-4.0, they have enough attention that if you chunk by page and you f take the five most relevant pages, um, you have way better results because you have a lot of context around. And for some reason, human, when we write down documents, we tend to put things uh, that mean the same thing on the same page. Uh, semantic searching, uh, semantic chunking, it's very nice. We have a module for it. Uh, it works very well on long content form, like web page or things like that, where you don't have uh, physical markers that you can use. Yeah, any question? Okay. Ah, uh, yes. So, yeah, I have like maybe a slide on that. Um, what we think, it's more like future of RAG, and I didn't speak uh, of it. Uh, we are working hard. Uh, as model have way bigger context window, uh, we think that in the near future, uh, like this year or next year, uh, basically your RAG pipeline will not to be about loading chunk into a vector database or into a prompt, and will be more and more about which document you put uh, inside your uh, KV cache. Uh, so, um, basically, the KV cache, maybe to, to explain, uh, is the enlarged context window. Part of your prompt um, is something that you can preload on cache in advance. It's cheaper to do like that. And that will be here for all your subsequ subsequent uh, prompt. So you are gaining like some input token uh, or some context window artificially. And uh, yeah, what we think is when you will have KV cache of 10 mega or so in September or in October uh, in a publicly available model. Uh, then the game will not be uh, what are my 10 best chunk in top of 10 documents, but more like what are the 10 documents I need to put uh, into my KV cache. And this presents a lot of challenge because uh, you cannot use uh, vector search anymore too much for that, or you can, but you need to do trickery uh, because largest embedding model uh, you don't have an embedding model f with one megabyte embedding today. Like maybe you have 16K or 32K token. Um, and the, the embedding model we have today like are too small basically to handle this use case. Uh, so we are working on new strategy uh, to try to select what is the good document to answer a question versus uh, what is the good part of document. And uh, yes, yeah, spoiler alert, uh, it may not be uh, because in similarity. Yeah. Okay. So, yep, thank you for, uh, for listening.